Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota standing by. Why don't I, I was going to actually do the Taylor Swift story and ask you about that. We'll get to it because you have some things okay. to say. But Twitter, go. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> as you know, I've been way out front on this for a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, this isn't just Twitter, as you just pointed mm -hmm. out, Eugene. Yeah. Uh, this is also about all of these companies. There are no rules of the road in place. We have no federal privacy law. We have state ones. Right. We have no competition policy for tech that right. applies to tech, something I've been trying to change. Uh, we have uh, no rules when it comes to do they get to keep their immunity when they're actually amplifying hate speech right. or misinformation yeah. and making money off it. It is one thing when someone just posts something and sends an email, puts something out there, and you own a company on which they did it. It is another when you are amplifying it and making exactly. money off it. Yeah. There are ways, as other countries have done, that we could put rules in place. So I think this should be a major focus for the Congress next year. Okay. I think we have to, as well as getting everything we can get done by the end of this year, because nothing has happened. Yes, um, he is seems to be we've unexplainably doing everything to run this company into the ground. It I really don't understand is. it. It is cyber employees, all kinds of things, engineers leaving. But there is more than that. That is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to no rules in place. It is the tip of the iceberg, and it's not the only social media site that we uh, as a country are struggling with. And you have been working on trying to get some accountability. And I, I ask, why would your Republican counterparts or anybody in Washington not want to fix what is a growing problem of disinformation flying across you know, the, I guess the internet airwaves or whatever you want to call it, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, and becoming destructive to our, not only our, our discourse, but to people's lives. Exactly. Well, there have been Republicans that have been willing to talk about eliminating or limiting Section 230 immunity. Right, Section 230. Which means you can be sued if you're amplifying and making money off it. That's the bottom line, because isn't right it? right now they're protected. Other companies aren't protected. Networks aren't protected. That's the first thing. The second thing is strengthening our antitrust laws. We have a chance right now of allowing our FTC and our Justice Department enforcers to get more funds by just passing the bill that Senator Grassley and I have, which has already passed the House now, uh, to change the merger fees so they have more resources. Do you think that so will, that's where I want to put the happen? Taylor Swift fans, yeah. right on that, exactly. right on antitrust, because so, that story of Ticketmaster separate from the tech companies, that is a story of a monopoly gone wild. So here's that the Ticketmaster story, and then hold and then continue, yeah. but, but Ticketmaster mm -hmm. has now canceled <laughs> planned public sale of tickets for Taylor Swift's upcoming tour. This is a mess, mm -hmm. citing, quote, extraordinary high demand on ticketing systems and insufficient inventory. The public scale plan for today was for any tickets left over from this week's pre-sales. Ticketmaster says it received three and a half billion ticket requests <laughs> on the first day of pre-sales on Tuesday. I mean, I saw it coming. Taylor Swift, you guys, <laughs> come on. Come on, Ticketmaster, it's Swift. Um, um, that's nearly four times its previous peak. Two million tickets were sold that day. Taylor Swift has not responded for a re request for comment, but go ahead. Antitrust, how okay. soft. So uh, in 2010, yeah. Live Nation and Ticketmaster were allowed to merge. They, mm -hmm. The combined company now has 70% of ticket sales. So in truth, there's no other choice. And that's what's going on. There is a monopoly. They also have quickly and quietly bought so many venues and arenas, so it is a vertical integration. That's why we are pushing the Justice Department to look at this and to look back at that consent decree of which they have power over that consent decree. I talked to Senator Mike Lee last night. We chair the Committee on Antitrust. We are going to go ahead with a hearing on Ticketmaster um, this year. Um, and so I think you're going to start seeing a lot of questions. It is not just about Taylor Swift. Right. Uh, this has been going on. It's about uh, prices, hidden fees mm -hmm. that are way too high. It's about site disruptions and the kind of thing. And of course, you could anticipate it. But where else are you going to go to sell your tickets when there's only one game in town? So from Taylor Swift, one powerful woman to another, Speaker Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> so Susan Page wrote the book. You've worked 
alongside, yes. side by side with her for years. And I just would love for you to talk a little bit about your experiences with her and also this moment of her stepping down. I believe, my gosh, the second time she served as the first woman speaker, with second in line to the presidency, one of the most powerful people in the world. And what comes to mind when you think of this moment? I, I, I say gratitude, number one, for her service, but for you as a friend as well as a colleague. I say strength. Ah. Um, that moment when she walked out of the White House and flipped on those sunglasses <laughs> um, after taking on Trump on another government yeah. shutdown, uh, that was it for me. Because yeah. I just think it just shows at any moment she has in her small frame, um, she is able to exhibit strength, strength yeah. in dealing with a close caucus many times with a lot of different views, keeping her eyes on what matters, getting the Affordable Act, CARE Act passed, um, investing more in bringing down uh, greenhouse gases, doing something about climate change uh, than any leader, working with Senator Schumer, our leader over in the Senate to get things done, working with mm -hmm. presidents from George Bush on. It's just an incredible story. And a uh, first woman speaker, and we are so proud of her. Um, and I just, I loved when actually Senator McConnell uh, made those beautiful yes. comments about her because there is no doubt there is respect about for her, no matter how strongly they disagreed with her. Absolutely. She was able to get things done because she would never, she would never turn. Yeah. She would always straight on lead. Susan, uh, your thoughts given uh, what Senator Pelosi has had to say, and I'll just add that when I interviewed um, Nancy Pelosi um, about what her greatest achievement was in life, in her work, she did say it was the Affordable Care, I mean, it, right, right from the get-go, Affordable Care Act, that that was just, the. but you look at what happened after and how she stood up to President Trump time and time again, <laughs> having him, even at times, lorded over him. Um, this is a powerful woman. This is a woman who, if I may, knew her value and absolutely used it to the full extent of her ability for this country. And demonized uh, by Republicans, the favorite target of Republicans depicted as a witch and a devil. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of that was misog misogyny. Um, and also routinely underestimated. Uh, you know, I think that through her career until the end, others often did not understand exactly what they were coming up against when they yeah. were facing yeah. Nancy Pelosi. Just one other thing, looking at what she's going to do now. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was, it was a little bit of a surprise that she decided to stay yes. uh, in the Congress even after stepping back from the leadership. Uh, she told us yesterday that when her husband was attacked, some people assumed that meant she would feel compelled to go home to California. She said it made it more likely to stay Double down. in Washington mm -hmm. yeah, because that she seems right. did not want to get them the satisfaction That's of right. having her leave town. That's right. You're damn right. Um, and I'm glad that, <laughs> I mean, that, that seems very uh, what we know of her. But just really quickly, sorry, Alex, the mother-in-law line. Oh, so, oh, so yeah, so after, after her we asked her We asked her yesterday uh, what advice was she going to give her successor. And she yeah. said yeah. she was not, Thanksgiving is coming. She said, I'm not going to be the mother-in-law who goes into the kitchen and says, you're making the stuffing wrong. That's not how we make the stuff <laughs> in this family. So she said she was not going to give advice to her successor, which is a statement I believe will be untrue. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I hope uh, not. I'm so glad that she has it. commented about stuffing before yes. this, <laughs> giving, and I, and yes. her views. Nancy, you can come into my kitchen and you can tell me what to do. I'm like, all oh, I would take it. I just give the advice to whoever's getting that advice. Take it. Senator Amy Klobuchar, it's always good to see you. Thank, Thank you for you, coming in. I know you had a late night last yeah, night. Yeah, presiding till midnight. Good at the Lord. No it's seven in the morning. What it's are you good. doing? It's all okay. good. Okay. Uh, and uh, Susan, um, oh, and this is Amy's uh, book. Her oh, new yeah. memoir is entitled The Joy of Politics. Boy, did we just well, talk about it, actually, well, in a way, because. Exactly. It is. This, you can choose cynicism and fear. Or you can choose joy in this job. So this comes you out in choose. May? Yeah. Oh, congratulations. About overcoming a lot of obstacles. All right, well, so. we look forward to that. Thank you very much. Uh, Susan Page, thank you as well. Your book, Madam Speaker, this is what needs to fly off the shelves once again. It already <laughs> has, but my God, what an incredible time to really look back on the career and the legacy of Nancy Pelosi. She's still serving, but stepping down as the first woman Speaker of the House.